Hi, and welcome back to the section on errors and exceptions in Lambda expressions. Now, what are we going to learn in this section? We'll start with reviewing exceptions, explaining what they are and why they are not suitable for use within Lambda functions. And then we're going to move on to a different approach to error handling that is a little bit more in line with functional programming. And then finally, we're going to take a look at an example, which is a fully functional interactive calculator in which we're going to use many of the techniques that we've learned so far in this course. Now, let's start with the video in which we're going to explain why you cannot catch exceptions in Lambda expressions. So what we're going to cover in this video is first of all, what exceptions are, and then we're going to look at why exceptions don't work within Lambda expressions. An exception is simply an object, just like almost everything is an object in Python. But it's a special kind of object because it can be part of a race statement. And you've undoubtedly seen that and, and actually programmed this yourself in Python. Things like this, race, exception, and then some kind of message error. Once this happens, once an exception has been raised in this way, either by you as a programmer or somewhere in the libraries that you're using, that is the most common scenario, this will cause the program to crash, right? Unless you catch the, error, the exception within a try except statement. Now, this kind of way of dealing with errors is a very common design pattern, which is not only used in Python, but also in programming languages such as Java. And it's actually a very elegant and very good way to deal with error messages. But to raise and to catch exceptions, you need statements. And because statements are not allowed within Lambda expressions, this way of dealing with errors is not Lambda friendly. Now, to illustrate this with an example, let's consider this very simple function, str. I'll just demonstrate what it does. If I say str 1 plus 2, it will return 3. Now, why? Well, because s is a string, we split the string based on a plus, and then all the, the substrings that we get, we transform into integers, and then we sum the list of integers that is the result, right? So we get the, the sum of 1 and 2. Now, that's pretty straightforward function, but say that we make a mistake and by accident, for example, I forget the quotes, it's still valid Python, but it means something different because now we pass the integer three to add strip. If I do that, I get an attribute error. Why? Well, because here S will be an integer and integers don't have a dot split method. And that's why we get an attribute error. How can we deal with that? Well, the typical Python way to deal with this is to use a try except state. So I would say try, And then I would put the return statement within the try accept statement within the try block. And I would say accept and the accept would specify which exceptions we want to catch. Now, good programming style dictates that we don't catch anything, but we catch specifically the errors that we know can arise in this case, an attribute error. So we catch only attribute errors. And if there is an attribute error, we decide what the function should return. So let's just say that we return none, All right? And if I now execute this, it will return none. So str will catch the exception and safely return none. That's pretty nice, right? That's a very clean way to deal with error messages. But let's now consider what happens if we turn this function into a Lambda expression. So we can do this very easily because it is almost already a Lambda expression. So we can say, okay, Lambda str, right? The L prefix for Lambda. Then I say Lambda s, and then I just paste this, right? And if I now say print L str, one plus two, it will give me a three. So it's a very nice Lambda function. But now let's say I make the same mistake as I did before. So I pass one plus two, in other words, the integer three, and I execute it. You see that I get the same attribute error, of course, because S is now an integer and an integer doesn't have a dot split method. Now, the point here is that we cannot possibly catch this attribute error within our Lambda function. Why not? Well, to do so, we would need a try except statement. And that's a statement and statements are not allowed in Lambda expressions. In Lambda expressions, you can only have expressions. And unlike for most statements, such as the for statement, which has a sort of a list comprehension, etc., as an alternative, there is no expression alternative to a try except statement. There is no such thing as a try expression. And for that reason, this system of raising and catching exceptions is not very Lambda friendly. 